Breaking news just coming into our newsroom. The National Weather Service saying it was straight line winds that did damage in Cherryville yesterday. Chopper 9 flew over some of that damage this afternoon. You can see trees were knocked down, buildings damaged, power lines. Crews are still working to get the lights back on in some areas, especially at several schools. Look at that, a tractor trailer uh, just blown right over. The area has been put under a state of emergency to help bring in extra resources for all this damage. Um, personally, I would say it's the closest thing to Hugo that I have seen. It, there's damage everywhere. It was not just in one single area. Our chief meteorologist Steve Udelson is in Severe Weather Center 9. Steve, this happened during yesterday's first batch of storms earlier in the afternoon. Yes, yeah, Scott, which actually blossomed about this time yesterday. We're tracking a pair of thunderstorms over Burke and McDowell counties. Shortly after that, a severe thunderstorm warning was issued. Those storms marched to the east, gaining intensity, blasting through portions of Gaston County. And again, we kept an eye on that. A lot of damage reports, including in Gaston County. And we were actually analyzing winds over 60 miles per hour from that storm. We're also hearing stories of survival and heroism in that storm. Today, only Channel 9's Gaston County reporter Ken Lemon spoke to a man who got thrown around by that wind trying to help a mom and daughter trapped in their car. Ken. Jason Day came here to watch his daughter play a softball game, but the wind that canceled that, the weather was just too hard. His last memories of last night, sitting in a car right here, waiting in a line to leave the park when a tree blew down on top of a car right beside him. He went in to try to help, but he doesn't remember getting blown away. A witness says that he flew as high as 40 feet in the air. Jason Day told me he doesn't need memories to know this. By the grace of God that I'm here. Day remembers a blistering storm whipping debris everywhere. He was on his phone with his wife and in line with several other cars leaving the park. I looked over to my right. And I, could, I saw a, a tree starting to fall. It fell on a car with a woman and her daughter inside. They were stuck. He said, that tree fell on that car. I have to go get those people out. And that was the last thing I heard. My first reaction was get out and see, you know, if they're all right. He never made it to the car under the tree. A witness told me a huge gust of wind swept up a large branch and Jason Day with it. She said he appeared to be as high in the air as a power line's. He landed on the grass. I mean, it knocked me out, so yeah. I didn't know anything until I was in the hospital. He needed a night in the hospital, 12 staples on his head and stitches on either side of his face for an act of kindness he can't remember, an act that could have easily taken his life. Well, I think I'd do it all over again. I mean, that's, that's what I was trying to do is help somebody. That woman and her daughter, they managed to make it out on their own, but she told us she is grateful that Jason Day did everything he could to try to help them. Live and cheerful, I'm Ken Lemon, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Thanks, Ken. What a true hero he would have been, obviously, and he took a, a big hit from that storm. Again, just moments ago, the National Weather Service told us that it was straight-line wind damage of 80-mile-per-hour winds that caused all that damage in what we call microburst over uh, Cherville area. Of course, a quieter evening now. When I come back, I'll talk about the next round of